uh, one gets used to uh, referring to Roy McMurtry and a whole bunch of things all in one breath. You want to say not just former Chief Justice, but former Attorney General, former Solicitor General, High Commissioner, Chair of the CFL, patron of all the progressive public interest causes in the legal community I can literally think of. Uh, but of course, it's his current role uh, that I am uh, so thrilled uh, to acknowledge him by today. My boss, uh, the Chancellor of this great university, please join me in welcoming Chancellor Roy McMurtry to say some words about former Justice George Carter, our next award recipient. Well, thank you very much, Dean Sawson, for your most uh, kind and generous uh, remarks and, and to state uh, how delighted I am to have had the opportunity of working with you over in recent years and to congratulate you for uh, your total commitment uh, uh, to social justice. Now, I am certainly most uh, delighted to uh, be with uh, part of such a distinguished group of people who have gathered here today. And I'm, of course, most uh, pleased as Chancellor of York since uh, succeeding Peter Corey in 2008 to share this historic occasion uh, with all of you. And I'd like to congratulate uh, the many people who are responsible uh, for this new, wonderful, this wonderful building, the Caniff Building. Peter, Corey, I'd like to first congratulate you on your receipt of the Osgood Award of Excellence and, uh, and to say uh, how much your friendship has made to me, has been to me over these very many years. It's now my turn to get to my very good friend, the Honorable George Carter, who was born in Toronto, the oldest, eldest of 14 children. His parents, immigrants from Barbados, successfully, Barbados, successfully managed their large family during the Depression, encouraging education and self-discipline. I uh, attended the premiere of a film about the Honorable George Carter's life, produced by his daughter, Linda, who's uh, with us today, of course. And some of the quotes that you'll hear from me uh, may well have been had taken from that film. And as well, uh, George Carter has been a friend of mine for more than 50 years. His mother took care of the children and his father worked in a factory. And the quote, uh, Mr. Carter, I think back to the wonderful good fortune I had in having two great parents. They were just ordinary folks at home and that's where the real lessons were learned. Although economically life was difficult during this time, George Carter uh, excelled at school. He attended Harvard Collegiate Institute and graduated at the top of his class. He went on to uh, earn a bachelor's degree from the Trinity of, from Trinity College of the University of Toronto, where I was pleased to follow him, his footsteps, uh, several years later. Uh, at the University of Toronto in, in 1944. George Carter served in the Canadian Army from 1944 to 1945, returning home to pursue his dream of a legal career. He graduated from Osgoode Hall Law School in, 19, in 1948. George article, uh, began his articles in 1945 with B.J. Spencer Pitt, the only black lawyer practicing in Toronto and who uh, was a good friend of my uh, lawyer father. In 1947, he went to work for Sidney Harris, a Jewish Canadian, and 
at the time, no other firm would accept black students for training, for articling, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and Mr. Pitt, uh, B.J. Spencer Pitt, uh, and Sidney Harris, and, and George Carter were pioneers in opening doors for black lawyers. After being called to the bar in 1949, George opened his own firm on Bay Street in 1952. And again, quoting, I wanted to be a lawyer, I wanted to have my own practice, and that I did for 31 years. And thinking back, George states that it was, quote, a great journey. There were the challenge of solving problems and he was thrilled with the idea of getting up in court and presenting a case and argument. He also still remembers the many fine people he met over those years, and in his words, as well as the rascals, too. <laughs> I had the privilege as Attorney General to appoint George Carter in 1979 as a judge for the Ontario Provincial Court which later became the Ontario Court of Justice, where he served with great distinction for 16 years. He was Canada's first native-born black judge. And again, I quote, it was a great experience. I loved listening to people and their stories and all their problems. In addition to his distinguished legal career, uh, he has a, a excellent, outstanding record of community involvement and service, and he has been a most influential role model for so many people over so many years. He was a founding member of the Toronto Negro Veterans Association, a member of the Committee for the Adoption of Colored Youngsters, a group that studied and promoted the adoption of black children, a founding member of the National Black Coalition of Canada, founding member and past president of Toronto Negro Business and, and Professional Association and a board member of the Ontario Black History Society. He was also instrumental in setting up legal aid in Ontario. In 19, I'm sorry, in 2005, he received the Harry Jerome Lifetime Achievement Award. He's also, of course, a devoted husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather whose love for life and respect for people are the hallmarks of his many accomplishments. It has been, again, I repeat, a great pleasure for me to have enjoyed his friendship for so many years, and it's a great privilege for me to be present while uh, the Honorable George Carter will, uh, is being uh, given the Osgood Award of Excellence, also known, as you know, as Robinette Mendel. And, an or, and, and two uh, individuals uh, who are members of the Black Law Students Association here at Osgood are going to make the presentation. And I'd like to call upon Camille Dunbar and Oyenka Akinyele uh, to make the presentation. And again, now we have a, uh, a film, a short clip from the documentary that uh, Chancellor McMurtry referred to, done by uh, former Justice Carter's um, uh, daughter, Linda Carter. So uh, let's uh, watch a minute or two of uh, that documentary. She wanted to make a little presentation. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to uh, hang on? There's a, an extra presentation coming before that film. And it's, it's for Chief Justice McMurtry which is a signed Osgood jersey from R.J. Gray, one of our 
esteemed faculty and best hockey players, thank you for reminding me. And now I think we're ready for the film. Back in the 30s when George and, and uh, I and all, we were known as colored people. You have to remember when we went to school, there wasn't a person of color in any office in all of Canada. There were only about, say, maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred colored people in all of Toronto. So there weren't very many in the area. George was head of the family and very bossy. It was very difficult for him to accept the fact that he had these five very strong sisters. He had six, but the five of us were home at that time. Daddy had all the, uh, a lot of books that he read. He was very well read. And he wanted to be a lawyer. And the fact that he had all of us, he never got to be one. But he had a tremendous mind, and I think he just sort of passed it on to uh, George to do this thing that he really wanted to do, so he was very pleased about that. Law, I was going to go, law. I was going to be a lawyer, period, eh? Then I went and studied, and Oscar, because I'd heard of this great law school, Oscar, after the in serving in the army. And I get in there late for the first year. It's October now. I went in there and the first over 400 students and as I said somebody conference of black lawyers I said I looked around in there and I said there wasn't one brother in there. I had to start my humble beginnings, so I started to do work for others. Eh? They, a lot of these lawyers were making money in the real estate. They didn't want to go to court, so they give me the court work, you see? And that way I became very skilled at the rules of practice and the laws of evidence. I found that if you could do the work, they didn't care what color you were. When he uh, got his judgeship, it was such a fabulous day. We celebrated. We, so we all loved proud. it. We were very proud. It was of so him. beautiful. And when we, uh, you know, got the uh, cards with the Honorable George Carter, and I showed everybody in New York, and they said, "Your brother's a judge." And then they said, "Oh, sure." <laughs> But it was wonderful, yeah. it was really exciting. You don't sit on the bench unless you have some achievement. Certainly not in Ontario. You're not called to the bar as a black person unless you have the ability. I mean, it just doesn't happen, even today. But you might well understand back then when he was called to the bar, what it took for an individual, a black man, to be called to the bar and to be accomplished. And somebody who didn't just say, well, you know what, I deserve it. He got there and served very humbly. 